In this how-to video, I will be walking through the steps to register and use a custom service broker in K2. I will be working with a service broker that allows you to read in data dynamically from an XML document. This broker is a demonstration service broker, but it is helpful in scenarios where you might want to populate various dropdown lists on a form with values that come in from XML document file sources that perhaps are updated by a third party. Once you have created or downloaded a service broker assembly, you need to register it with the K2 environment. The first step is to copy the service broker DLL file to the service broker directory on all of your physical K2 servers. To save some time, I have already downloaded the XML document reader service broker DLL file that I need to the desktop of my machine shown here on my screen. Using Windows Explorer, I'm going to copy the service broker assembly file to the installation folder for K2 on this server. On my instance, it lies under program files x86, K2, and I'll drop it here in the service broker folder. Note, if you are updating a service broker assembly that already exists, it may be necessary to restart the K2 server service before you can copy the DLL, since it may be in use by the service. I'll do this in my environment by opening up the task manager option for this server, then in the services tab, I'll scroll down to the K2 server service and restart it. While that's happening, if you have multiple K2 servers in your environment, you should also copy the DLL to all of those K2 servers since the service broker assembly will not be automatically deployed to all servers in your K2 environments. The next step requires registering a service type with this new broker assembly. A service broker assembly must be registered as a service type with your K2 environment before a service instance can be created. Keep in mind, you do only need to do this once per K2 environment. To do this, I'm going to use the K2 management site of which I have opened up to the dashboard screen here. So to get into service type configuration, I'll open up the integration menu option on the left side of the page, then select service types. Next, I'll click the new button from the menu at the top of the list. Then on the configure service type window that appears, click on the service dropdown list to open it up. Then search for the custom XML service broker option. This is where you'll search for your DLL that you just put in the service broker directory. Next, I'll configure the new service type with the following settings. For the system name, I'll just say K2 Learning Dynamic XML Reader. For display name, I'll do the same with spaces in between the words. Then I'll just add a brief description. For GUID, I'm going to leave that left to its default setting. In your own environment, it's always a good idea to give your service types a logical or meaningful name to improve supportability. I'll click OK to add the new service type, and I should be good to go as it appears here on this page. Now that we have a service type available, the next task is to create a service instance that points to an XML data file. This involves entering the location of the file and pointing the service broker to the data to read in. Keep in mind, other brokers will have different settings depending on the requirements of the system you are trying to connect with. With the new service type selected in my list, I'll click the New Instance button from the menu at the top. For display name, I'm going to call this instance XML List of Airports Demo. We're going to point this instance to an XML file that contains a list of airport codes. Perhaps this file comes in from a third-party source daily so that we don't have to keep it updated manually. I'll also give it a description. Impersonation is okay for my authentication mode. You can select from various other options here, but it will depend on what your custom service broker has implemented as to what your best option is to pick. Notice I also need to provide a value linking to the XML file for this service instance. I'll paste this into the XML file path setting. Again, these values are going to be specific to the requirements for the service broker you're loading up, so they will look different than what you see on my screen at this moment. That's all I'm going to enter in here. I'm not going to put a check in the box to generate smart objects for this service instance just yet, because I do want some manual control over what gets created. I'll just click OK to move on and create this new instance. 
Let's double check the list of service instances by clicking on the service instances menu option here on the left. And that looks good. You can see that we do have a new airports list service instance appearing here. The final step is to create a smart object from this service instance. By selecting my new service instance in the list, I'll then click on the Generate Smart Objects button from the top of the page. I'm going to use the airport option by putting a check in the box next to it. I'll click OK. With that, we should have a smart object available up in the category structure. I'll scroll up to the menu, right click on categories and select refresh. Drill down into the K2 Learning Dynamic XML category where you can see the new smart object appears. Let's take a moment to test it out. Upon selecting the airport smart object, notice we have list and read methods available. I'll select list airport, click execute, then I'll click the execute button on the filter window. And here we have a listing of airports and their codes brought to us from a custom service broker. Note the concepts in this exercise apply equally to other custom service brokers in relation to installing them in your K2 environment. I want to stress as well that any service brokers from the K2 community market site are provided by the K2 user community, not source code technology holdings, the parent company of K2, and they are not supported by source code technology holdings. Many of them do have full code projects available for you to pull down and customize to your own needs, but you will need to test and support them in your own environment.